What's going on guys, it's Bromley at Empire Barbell and today we are going to talk about programming specifically as it pertains to novices versus intermediates and we're going to be using starting strength and the Texas method as an example of those training principles. Now real quick, if you haven't, go ahead and click on the t-shirt link at the bottom. Our store is live. I want your guys' feedback. Even if you're not interested in buying anything, just click it. Let me know what you think about the logos and the designs. We have our gym logo up, the Empire Barbell logos, along with this new gym dog brand that I'm trying to get rolling. And remember guys, I really appreciate everybody's feedback and support, it means a lot to me. So getting into the meat and potatoes of today, uh, to start out, we have this idea of novices versus intermediates. I've covered this before. The broadest, most simple way that I think of it is how well do you recover from all out efforts? That's really what it comes down to. The, the differences aren't clearly defined. It's not like you get a different colored belt. It's not like you get an alert on your phone that you are now an intermediate or an advanced lifter. It blends and it can apply to one lift differently versus another one. I've met very strong people that I've been able to treat as novices in the past because they're not technically dialed in or they were kind of all over the place. They had a lot of rough edges to round out. So it really comes down to how well do you recover from all out efforts. So novices, because you have this ceiling systemically what your body can tolerate versus your ability to get to that ceiling. Untrained lifters are relatively low. They can't quite clear that gap, which means every all out effort doesn't have the same systemic cost. As you get more advanced, that means you're dialed in. You can redline it a lot closer to your body's actual physical capabilities. Your nervous system's dialed in. You're technically very dialed in. You get the most bang for your buck given how well you are developed at the moment, which means every all out effort is an SOB to recover from. This is why advanced lifters will have to deload three, sometimes four weeks out from a meet. Whereas you will get novices that could do something moderately heavy a couple days out and they're absolutely fine. So we, we take that into consideration when we're programming. So starting strength. Now Ripito has some controversy associated with him. I myself am actually a Mark Ripito fan. I don't agree with everything he's ever said. I certainly think he's chosen some weird hills to die on. But as somebody who has taken barbell training technique and programming and made it accessible for the masses, I think he's done a killer job. And I think he's done enough good for lifting culture as a whole that we can kind of weight that against things that might be silly or overrepresented. So for starting strength, we have the epitome of a simple linear progression. A linear progression that might be confusing, linear periodization, classical periodization, block, angular, whatever. LP, linear progression, simply means sets and reps stay the same, weight increases a little bit each time. Five by five is one of the oldest linear progression methods in lifting culture. It's been around, God, I think since the 40s or 50s. Basically, you run your five by five on starting strength, three by five, they start you out a little lower volume. And you get your practice in, and every time you come back, you just add a little bit. And what you find as a novice is that your ability to hit PRs after two or three days rest continues for quite a while because you're increasing faster than the weight increases, which means you can sustain that for quite a bit. And even though we think of this as a novice program, this type of progression, actually it does work with better lifters. You just have to play around with how frequently you train, how you manage recovery. So starting strength follows an AB split. Uh, you just alternate these back and forth. So it go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, back and forth. So squatting is the same three by five every time. Deadlifts alternate between one set of deadlifts because they address, and I brought this up before, deadlifts are very hard to recover from, even for novices, especially with high frequency squatting. Squats are biomechanically friendly. Even for people who are disadvantaged squatters, you still tend to be able to squat a lot more frequently than you can deadlift. Deadlifts have a high uh, recovery cost, no matter who you are. Uh, and th those get alternate with cleans. And it's not because cleans are some great analog for deadlifts, but cleans by themselves, the Olympic lifts by themselves are a good developmental tool. I think most people should learn to, to get a handle on having a passable power clean. Uh, Ripito points out something I actually agree with that I never thought of. He's like, if you do speed deadlifts or dynamic work, trying to get your pull faster, you're pulling it because you're trying to pull it fast. Or when you do a clean or a snatch, the way you move is dictated by the fact that you have to move it fast. So developmentally, it's a little bit different. It trains a different threshold. It trains triple extension, the jump, which is athletically very important, whereas the speed deadlift doesn't do that. So I'm actually a fan, especially early on, of getting a handle on that. It's just, it's value. And it's a good way to train some type of hip extension that is not as heavy as a deadlift. So we're already trying to work in recoverability, even with a very novice program. Benching and overhead pressing alternate as well. And I actually like that because it keeps your pressing well-rounded. It doesn't overdevelop 
uh, the pectorals over the shoulders. Shoulder pressing is very strong for benching and the variety keeps your shoulders from getting fried. So that's also a very good move. You set your baseline numbers, you add five to 10 pounds every single time and you run that until you hit a brick wall and then there's recommendations of how to progress that afterwards. So it's very simple, very simple movement selections, hinges around compound movements, medium strength rep ranges. Ripito's a big fan of fives with good reason. It's good blend of volume and intensity of extra rep work and all out effort. It's close enough to singles that your maximal strength benefits but the weight doesn't stay so heavy that volume suffers. So you still get more touches, more practice reps, more total all tonnage. So fives are, are a good range, which is why you tend to see it in so many uh, novice, beginner, inter and even intermediate linear progressions. So the Texas method is often billed as the logical jump from something like starting strength. When you've topped this out, when you've got some strength, maybe your squat and deadlift are well into the 300s, maybe your pressing is into the 200s and you find that your ability to grind out five pounds every session on these sets across is starting to suffer. That is a good sign that you are more developed, that you are getting closer to that ceiling, and that now we need to pay more attention to recovery. So the main difference between starting strength and the Texas method is that we are now focusing on recovery as a primary driver of progress. It's not just enough to do the work and then do a little more next time. We have to do the work, make sure that we recover while still doing an optimal, num uh, an optimal amount of frequency. We can't stop training altogether because that's lost work that we're missing out on. So instead we can back the work off. We can have recovery days. Instead of having the same volume all the way across, we can manipulate volume and intensity on each day so we can get training in without overtraining but also we're not stopping completely to recover. So we're, we're still not missing out on that training benefit. So we have our volume day. So we're gonna squat, we're still alternating pressing and benching each time. So it might go bench, press, bench, and then the next week would be press, bench, press. Squats are still three days a week. Deadlifts alternate only deadlift Monday and Friday. Uh, deadlifts alternate with cleans. Deadlifts is still one set of five. You're not doing a lot of volume there. Same reason, especially as you're more advanced, it becomes extra true. You don't need a ton of very hard deadlift workouts, especially when you're squatting frequently throughout the week. And again, power cleans are there on Friday uh, to kind of deload you from deadlifts while also drilling explosiveness. So now what we're doing with the Texas method is we're starting with, now we're going up to five by five, so it's a little more volume, and we're starting with 90% of what we think a five rep max might be. The idea is to set this baseline of work which is somewhat challenging but doable. And every week on Monday, we're still following the linear progression where we're adding a little bit of weight. So volume in a very calculated, even way continues to climb. Friday is the heavy day, so we're not doing a bunch of sets. We're just working up to one max five. And our goal every Friday is to beat that number by some margin. So when you're in this kind of new intermediate stage, you'll find that you can progress your max five pretty consistently, even if it's just five, two and a half pounds even at a time. You can edge up each week for a good amount of time until you stall. And then again, there's other recommendations, other progressions you can follow to keep that going or to reset and build back up. The, I've seen things that recommend going from max fives down to a couple repeating threes to even let's say five singles just to work in the same weight range, but just breaking up the work so we can continue to add weight and then resetting back to a max five at some other point. There's, there's options here. There's more variability. It's not always just as cut and dry as what's displayed here. Now, the big thing that sets this apart, and this is what most people don't do instinctively because they think unless you're going balls out, you're not training. And that couldn't be further from the truth. The more advanced you get, the more days like Wednesday are necessitated. And that is the recovery day. The recovery day is simply some touches under the bar with less overall volume, less sets and reps and less weight. So you take 80 to 90% of whatever you did on Monday, and instead of five by five, you're just doing two by five, just a couple touches. That allows you to keep your technique crisp. That allows you to get work in, to get blood flow. There is still a training effect because it still contributes to the overall volume of the week, but it does not hinder the recovery leading into the intensity day on Friday. So you still come in fresh enough to hit a really hard set of five. Now this split of going from high volume to medium volume to very low volume, over the work week, that's gonna be present in pretty much any training, any formal training program you look into. So if you look at what the Soviets did, if you look at what pops up in strength and conditioning textbooks, if you follow uh, a 
popular coach like Shaco or somebody who really has a death grip on the calculations, on the mathematical tonnage and how it changes week to week and actually from workout to workout, you see these very deliberate changes in volume from workout to workout where if you do three days a week, they'll have half the volume of the week in one workout and then maybe 20% in another workout and maybe 30% in another workout. And they intentionally wave it for that same effect. It is a very, I mean, you can argue all day as to why you think it works, but we know that the pattern is very viable. We know that it works very well, especially with more advanced lifters. So we're already starting to get an inkling of managing uh, volume to help with recovery while still keeping a sustainable frequency and training load over the week. Now, I am a big fan of the Texas method, mainly because of the split. I like the idea of a volume day versus an intensity day. It works well. It's one of those things that looks good on paper, like it makes sense on paper, but in practice, it works just as well because sometimes you come up with something that looks elegant and it, it's very symmetrical and mathematically it's visually pleasing the way the numbers fit together. And then you do it and you're like, oh my God, this doesn't work at all. This works very well. And I actually kind of came across this concurrently because I was aware of the Texas method, but I never followed it myself, never really dug into it. And it was only within the last however many years that I kind of read through practical programming and found some of the uh, principles that they talk about and how that relates to a program like this. And I realized that I had kind of accident, well, not accidentally, but I had stumbled on it in kind of a parallel way, some parallel thinking going on where I had started with a simple linear progression. The ones that influenced me were the ones with plus sets like Grayskull LP and pretty much everything after like 2008 had a plus set, 531 juggernaut, um, you know, fifth set, whatever. So I would do something like a five by five with a plus set and it would be a linear progression. We'd go up each week and then I would get more aggressive. So instead of five or 10 pound jumps, I would go five by five to four by four to three by three, last set always to failure. And I would have much more even jumps and then I would wave back. And I would stack that with another day that was lighter just to get light touches. It would kind of look like the recovery day. It was just a lot of repeating sets of low reps, a substantially reduced percentage. And for guys that were trying to find their groove, for guys that were still trying to get let's say technical proficiency in a squat, or still weren't really that comfortable with overhead pressing. That had a huge training effect as far as allowing for the type of practice that you don't get when you just go balls out. And this is very important. Even as you get advanced, you realize that if you're not routinely getting easy, crisp touches, that your technique can suffer a little bit. So becoming very dialed in requires that practice and that due diligence. Now, eventually, that lighter day actually turned into an intensity day. So I had a run where I was doing that same type of plus set progression with a maximal day. And it would be one day it might be a max three, one day it might be a max five, we go back and forth. The principles were very much the same. The exact method of progression was a little bit different, but the principles were sound. It was still a day where we're doing a lot of sets and reps at a kind of a medium strength range and a day where we were going heavy uh, we were getting ourselves under load. We were learning to strain. We were learning to get our uh, nervous system dialed in and, and our sense of the weight and how heavy it was, was changing. So I had a ton of success with that. So down the road, I'm kind of doing a little bit of research or kind of forming these ideas into a topical video like we're doing right now. And I started to look specifically through the, through Texas method. And it's like, wow, that kind of looks familiar. And it just goes to show that there really is nothing new in weightlifting. There's only so many meaningful variations you can make. So you're gonna tend to see a lot of the same types of things repeated. So for you guys that are really new, that are just stumbling across uh, lifting for the first time, and you're just starting to get a handle on lifting, I always guide people to something like this. There's a few LPs that are really good, work really well no matter who you are. I actually like this for true beginners because I think if you are brand new, you don't really have any business going to failure on compound movements. You need kind of a baseline of practice and actually a baseline of strength before you really stand to get a lot out of those plus sets. So starting strength as it is, it's very tested, it's tried and true, and it works for very new lifters. And again, like I said, the principle of simple linear progression works for just about everybody. It's just a matter of how you orchestrate it. So this is a good example of how those principles evolved a little further, continue to work for lifters as they grow. So that's all I got for today, guys. I'm sure there's a ton of questions that I did not get to. 
I'm sure you guys are gonna have a ton of questions that I didn't cover in this video, so go ahead and leave it in the comment box or go ahead and start a thread on the forum, empireforum.com. We got a good growing community there. I wanna keep it growing, so let's get some momentum. So go ahead and start a thread, start some controversy. There's no sacred cows, all right? Thanks again for watching. Until next time, I'm Bromley at Empire Barbell. I'll see you.